Kia ora, folks. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the Barbie racer and um, what you do to write up the experiment. So I suppose the first thing you need to um, just talk a little bit about is the control of the variables of the experiment. So here we've got the, the ramp height which will fix and try and keep it quite shallow, quite low because you want, you want uh, Barbie to go down slowly. Um, and of course the, the, the car, the toy cars remains the same, the same um, stopwatch, all those sorts of things are kept constant. Um, so the only, the only really uh, changes or variables that we're going to look at is the ramp distance. That's going to be the independent variable because we're fixing the ramp, ramp distances. And of course the dependent variable is the time because the time is dependent on the ramp, ramp distance. So a good idea to just get that out of the way and state that right at the beginning of the experiment. Then the, the second thing to really talk about is the uh, accuracy improving techniques. And so um, probably the first thing is the parallax error, which is the, it's where you view it um, of, the, of the measure. So when if I'm measuring the ramp distance, um, obviously I need to get my eye right over where that where that distance is to the front of the wheels where it, it, it sets off. So that's the parallax error, so talk a little bit about that. The other one is um, the random error needs to be as minimized as possible. The random error is your variation of the trials, and this is why we do at least three, three, three runs for every distance that we do. So that's just minimizing the, um, the variation within those trials. The third thing uh, it, which would be really good to talk about is that there are limits to the, um, the, the distances. So on the, on the uh, early, on the initial runs, which the distance is very small, say up to about a metre, the, 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 the time, the ratio between the reaction time and the run time is quite large. So you need to talk a little bit about that. And as the distances get longer and longer, obviously the ratio between the reaction time, that is the delay time when you hit the button on the stopwatch, to the, to the run time is going to be a lot smaller. So the, the longer runs are going to actually be, they're going to have more accuracy to them than the shorter runs. So there are limits to the investigation that you need to point out. The fourth thing is, of course, is the physics ideas. And uh, with some nice little diagrams, you can talk a little bit about uh, the net force on this car. So the net force on this car, of course, is the, there's the rolling force, and it's dependent on two things. That is the, the, the support of the ramp and the weight force of the car. And of course, as I crank up the, as this, as this, um, as this ramp is, gets higher and higher, of course, the theta, the ramp angle, gets bigger and bigger, and therefore um, the weight, the, the driving force of the car, uh, or the rolling force of the car, is going to be closer and closer to the weight force, so it's going to get faster and faster. So high, high ramp angles, when the height is really, really big, that means there's going to be greater acceleration of the car, and low angles, uh, is going to be small acceleration of the car. So in this particular investigation, we don't want it to roll too fast anyway, because we're fixing the ramp height, so we actually want it quite low. So you want the, you want the trolley to actually really go quite slowly down, because again, getting more, there's more accuracy in having uh, longer, longer times and shorter times. Hope that helps. Just in terms of the Barbie racer and what we would plot here is that um, the, the, the distance is on the vertical axis and the time is on the x-axis. Now I've done this because the theoretical value is d is equal to vit plus half at squared. Now in this case vi, which is at the top of the ramp, the initial speed of the racer is always zero, so basically that's knocked out. So you're left with d is equal to half at squared. Now looking at that equation, what would, what would be helpful is that the, the, the distance 
uh, is on the vertical axis and the T is on the uh, horizontal axis, the x-axis. Now why, why I've done that this, in this particular case is that if I transform this, this um, square graph, um, I, will, I will be able to get my, a straight line and of course the gradient will be half A. That will, that will be the gradient value. Now there's no reason why I can't do the opposite way. I, I, I can do that, but it will just help me a lot. So even though that time is the, dep is the de dependent variable, I can still place it on the x-axis and the independent variable goes on the y-axis. It just helps me out with the calculations and when I transform the graph.